Don't let the beauty fool you. Incendiary bombs are one of the most destructive weapons ever created. Operation Meeting House was a firebombing raid on Tokyo during World War II carried out by the then U.S. Army's Air Force. 279 B-29 airplanes dropped 1,665 tons of bombs, making this the most destructive bombing raid in history. I tell you, the fires were burning so bright, you could almost read a paper in the cockpit. We were at 7,000 feet. Temperatures reached 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Oxygen was even sucked out of the air as glass began to melt. It was so hot for so long that by the next day, all the water inside of the school's swimming pool had boiled and evaporated into the air. Around 100,000 civilians lost their lives. That is close to the death counts of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki nuclear bombings combined. The aim of this strike was to stop Japan's capability of producing anything they could use in the war effort. As horrific as it was, Operation Meeting House succeeded to a high degree. Tokyo's war manufacturing was cut in half. And unfortunately, Tokyo was only one of 67 Japanese cities that were firebombed. Robert McNamara, the former U.S. Secretary of Defense under Kennedy, perhaps said it best. Killing 50% to 90% of the people of 67 Japanese cities and then bombing them with two nuclear bombs is not proportional in the minds of some people to the objectives we are trying to achieve. Most reasonable people, including myself, would admit that the firebombings of World War II went too far. There was no way to strike their war manufacturing without the fire also hitting civilian neighborhoods. However, the actions taken did save the lives of tons of Americans. The Japanese already proved themselves to be ferocious fighters, and troops captured by them had the lowest chances of surviving to the end of the war compared to all the other countries. Physicist William Shockley estimated that if the USA did a full ground invasion into mainland Japan, they would have likely lost 400,000 to 800,000 lives. It's easy to look back and judge those who carried out the bombings now, but it isn't so simple. Imagine if today, a foreign group attacks you and your family, killing some. They then vow to continue the attacks until you submit to their will. Wouldn't you stop at nothing to bring safety to your family? The USA faced a similar situation, but on a macro scale. Imagine the fear of the times, and imagine if you had a way to minimize your family's losses. If the president decided on a course of action that got more Americans unnecessarily killed, the public outcry would have been enough to ruin his career or worse. Throughout history, militaries have always used the most effective weapons at their disposal, and there was no exception in World War II. And that brings us to the current situation in Ukraine. Many of the clips at the start of this video featured recent incendiary bomb attacks on Ukraine. While there have been multiple uses of them, Putin still seems to be showing restraint. They seem to have been a message of how far Putin is willing to take things. For some reason, Western mainstream news is almost completely ignoring firebombings while hyping up possible nuclear attacks. The outrage over firebombings needs to be just as large as the outrage over nuclear bombs. Vladimir Putin did say recently that he wouldn't use nuclear weapons in Ukraine because it wouldn't make sense militarily nor politically. He has shown that firebombings are on the table and the international community seems to barely even talk about it. We need to spread the word about these horrible weapons of war. In individuals, insanity is rare. But in groups, parties, nations, and epochs, it is the rule. Frederick Nietzsche.
When we act like sheep, we are led to the slaughter. It's time to wake up and make people aware of the potential devastation created by fire binds. Maybe then our news outlets might talk about it. It's likely asking for too much, but it's worth a shot. And I'll leave you with this thought. What is war? Governments using money they don't have to fight strangers they barely know at the risk of ending all life on the planet. Why not declare utopia instead? Governments could use money they don't have to collaborate and improve the lives of those you can get to know while increasing the odds that humanity lives onto the stars. Either way, they're both financially unsustainable, so why not choose the path of love instead of hate? This is a new channel and I am trying to put out at least one video per week. I will always have more Ukraine and current war content on this channel, but also philosophy and a bunch of other cool stuff. So if you could, please remember to hit that like button and to subscribe and share it with your friends. Momento Mori, see you next time. I love the smell of napalm in the morning.